So you spend hours on your latest YouTube video, research, filming, editing, optimizing, perfecting every single detail. And when it's time to finally post it, 17 views. Believe me, I get it. I was there once, it sucks. So what's going wrong? Well, here are four things you're probably spending way too much time on. And we're gonna fix it for you with just a simple click of a button. You've probably heard of this saying, right? Content is king. And there's a good reason for that. Now this is typically true for most small channels starting out on YouTube. The reason somebody watches your video is because it's useful to them. And what that means is that the viewer probably doesn't care about you as a creator. Not yet, anyway. And they're more flexible with your production values. So unless your content is dedicated specifically to production values, be it a tech channel or a video production channel, for example, you might be spending too much time on those fancy visuals and professional setups. Now, don't get me wrong, you can definitely develop these skills over time, but don't use it as a barrier or an obstacle to a video you're making right now. And in some cases, for example, vlogging, viewers prefer more of a raw, authentic, rough cut to the footage. Feels real. If you are gonna up the production quality of your videos, do it in a smart way, not an expensive way. For example, and I know this is gonna sound a little silly, but if you're not happy with the image quality from your smartphone, then I recommend you buy a microphone for this cell phone, not a brand new camera. Trust me when I say bad audio is far worse than bad video. And on top of this, don't allow a lack of production quality to impact your creative workflow. For example, I'm in a new studio and I'm getting comfortable with these new surroundings and I'm still not happy with my lighting. In a previous video you may have seen on the channel, I was pasty white to begin with and then slowly the lighting changed throughout the video. My focus in that video and all videos is to deliver value to the viewer. And sure, a tiny minority may mention it in the comments and I'll take it on board and improve it in future videos, but I'm not gonna force that to stop me from making my content and neither should it stop you. Ultimately, what's far more important is the quality of the video idea. No amount of production value will rescue a bad idea. It just so happens we've got a tool here that will help you with one click. It's called Daily Ideas and it allows you to type in a single word and have it spit out dozens of intriguing click-worthy video ideas in seconds. On top of this, it scans your channel every single day and suggests ideas based on your current content. Of course, when it comes to vidIQ, these are all YouTube channel growth video ideas. And if you want to start using this, well, there should be a link, yeah, just above my head right now. Now then, are you spending too much time on what time you post your videos? Now let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. No, you shouldn't post a video at 3 a.m. in the morning when your audience is asleep. Yes, you should do live streams when you think your audience is online so that you can engage with as many of your audience as possible. But when it comes to videos on demand, sticking to a rigorous schedule, such as every Tuesday at 9 p.m., is a little nonsensical when you look at the bigger picture. Posting consistently is far more important than posting specifically. If you get your audience into a habit, they'll watch your videos when they see them on the homepage, browse, suggested. Even in the YouTube studio, it will tell you that publishing time is not known to affect the long-term performance of videos. And while that is true, at the opposite end of the scale, I would say if a video is very time sensitive, it doesn't matter what time it is, publish it as soon as possible. And if you do need help deciding on the best time to go live, then vidIQ does include a best time to post data set for you to check out. Video descriptions. You probably spend quite a bit of time on them, don't you? Well, here's a reality check. They are as important to your videos as this guy is to our live streams. That's an inside joke for you. When you're watching a video, you'll barely see any of the video description unless you decide to tap on it. And who's doing that these days? Even on a YouTube search page, you'll see maybe 100 characters max, although the timestamps are there, so they're probably worth doing. And if you think video descriptions are some huge opportunity for some SEO optimization, then I'm afraid you're sadly mistaken. The absolute truth is this. Anytime you are wasting on your video descriptions, and by extension, video tags should be reinvested back into your video title and your video thumbnail. And that's probably the most important thing to remember 
from this video. This is a typical description from one of our videos that we'll spend no more than 10 minutes on. We write a one line summary of a video, a call to action, which to be honest, should probably be at the very top of the description. We then have a link to a related video, the video chapters, and then more links to vidIQ's social media presence online. Put simply, we're not spending much time on our video descriptions because neither do the viewers. Having said that, if you are absolutely adamant about writing out a video description, then we do have a one click solution for you. When you are uploading or editing a video, simply use the vidIQ AI description generator to create a 50 to 100 word introduction to your video. It will give you three options, which if you really wanted to, you could actually use as the start of a video script. Once you're happy with the text, with a single click, it will insert the description into your video. Another job quickly and efficiently done. As for him, simple fix as well. So satisfying. Now then, keywords. Are they important and should you be spending time on them? Yes, but probably not in the way that you think. What I mean by that is stuffing keywords into your title, your description, your video tags, isn't necessarily going to get your video tons of views. However, understanding the language, the vocabulary, the jargon of your video topic and using it naturally throughout your content is a good idea. Knowing the keywords of your video topic demonstrates your knowledge. That will give you the creator credibility and the relatability with your audience. Again, vidIQ has the tools, in this case, to help you research keywords. In this example, I'm looking at the term YouTube monetization, and we're getting hints about what's hot for this topic. Shorts monetization, violations, appeal and rejections, and whether you can use an AI voice and still monetize your channel. The short answer to that one, by the way, is yes, but YouTube will be scrutinizing that video. One of the hidden gems of our keyword research tools is this questions panel. It turns a keyword into what questions people seek answers to. And since we all know that YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, this is the perfect ideas generator for content on your channel. Now, having done all of this keyword research, listen to this. You don't have to force those keywords into your title. I know that sounds crazy, especially if you think your video is search-based tutorial stuff, but take a look at this. This video is fairly clear in its objective to help YouTubers write video titles. It's very search friendly and the video is done okay. Now, this video is also about how to write YouTube titles. Not that you would know that from its title. Instead, it plays on the viewer's emotions, desires, and the quick impact it potentially delivers to the viewer. And as a result, this video has rocketed to the moon, not only with search traffic, but even more browse traffic months after its release. And so here we have two videos, very similar in content, but pitched very differently to the same audience with a dramatic effect on the performance of the videos. So stop wasting your time trying to match the right keywords to the right search terms and instead pitch the videos to your audience in a curious way that means they can't resist clicking. And this is where you start doing that. Oh, and thanks for sticking another 10,000 subscribers on the channel while I was recording this video. Yeah, I need to get an affiliate link for this clock, don't I? <laughs>